But our next speaker is going to be Dr. Lauren Pang. And uh, I think a lot of you know uh, Dr. Pang's background. He's a uh, retired Army. Was it 24 or 25 years, Lauren? 24. 24 in the Army Medical Corps. And uh, he's been a great resource to us, uh, not only on the DU issue, but uh, on the anti-GMO issue. And his presentation tonight is uh, this unethical human experimentation. I'm really interested in this. Uh, this is, gives me the chills of, of uh, Nazi Germany, uh, World War II. So, Lauren, thank you for being here. And Usually I come to the Big Island to talk about depleted uranium. And, you know, one thing that really baffled me about the lawsuit is it said that, well, we didn't quite win because the military gets to keep bombing on spot. As far as I'm concerned, we know real well that chemicals are dust, especially dust. Uh, it can spread 100 miles in three days, depending on the wind. So when we deal with chemicals, you know, the half-life is what, uh, two weeks, two months? How long does a chemical persist? Five half-lives? So that's 10 weeks, 10 months? So you got 10 weeks, 10 months to blow around, and it can go 100 miles in three days. You got dust depleted uranium dust, radioactive dust. So I don't really understand the lawsuit that, well, we keep bombing this, where, fine. You keep your crap on your area, bomb all you want. But we know it drifts, and the stuff is active millions of years. So I don't really quite understand that part of the lawsuit. But the other thing you also raised is that we talk about human experimentation, and it can be something as simple as breast cancer chemotherapy. I got a drug for breast cancer chemotherapy. Okay, who wants to come in? You all decide. It's a private thing. I don't say, you know, okay, law has decided. Everyone goes, you did, you didn't. It's confidential. And when she says no, the answer is really no. Nobody, no investigator, no doctor says, oh, gee, you're not being scientific. Um, she can say my religion. She could say, who made this product, the military? The answer is no. The answer is simply no. It's her decision. It's unethical to badger her, point her out. So the reason I'm here to talk about human experimentation is because Jim Albertini, um, <clears throat> we, we had a mentor. Uh, her name was Rosalie Bertel. I never really met her face to face. She passed away. She was a nun. She was a physicist, trained physicist who was a nun. A German. And uh, she hunted out the depleted uranium, the radiation aspect. And I, you know, I read all her papers and we wrote to each other and I was supposed to meet her, but she passed away. In discovered in her papers, she says, gee, geoengineering of the earth, everything, bombing, chemicals, whatever, global warming, everything. People want to control the earth. And she says, I think that's got to be unethical. I can't quite connect the dots, but for human sake, I think that's unethical. So she refers to the origins of human experimentation, the Nuremberg trials. And I thought, whoa, this is right down our alley. Too bad she passed away. We could have hit this off because I hunt out pesticides and she was looking at radiation. So I promised Jim I would look at the radiation issue and just play it out as we have looked at pesticides. And I'll do it for you tonight. Boy, was I sh shocked. There's 500 pages on the pesticide chemicals drifting all over, uncontrolled. There's 1.6 million pages on the radiation. Whoa, this is a major issue. And we'll go over some of that today. Now, this is the title of my talk. You put out some agent upon us, radiation, germs, chemicals, and at some point, it's, you got to ask, is this unethical human experimentation? Is it unethical human experimentation? Now, a lot of my stuff hit the lawyers. And they said, no, it's not. You're, you're confusing the Nazi trials with spraying of the atmosphere. Well, I'm sorry, but there's this, you don't have to write this down. Jim has this, Paka has this. You go to this. These are the hearings in 1994 of the Cold War. Right after the Nuremberg trials, after we learn what's unethical, the U.S. military and university contractors 
went and did all kinds of horrible stuff mm -hmm. to individuals and communities for the next eight years and it was secret. It came out 30 years later and in 1994 they had a hearing on this. What have we done? So we'll go over that because what we had done and what we promised not to do again, we're doing today. We seem to have forgotten. Next. Okay, let's get some definitions, a little bit, you know, homework here. What is a human experiment? Well, you test or you expose humans, not animals, not the environment. Rosalie Bertel said that you mess with the environment, eventually you mess with ourselves. All right, I just want to shortcut this and just mess with ourselves because we're part of the environment. And you expose them to something, X. I don't care if it's radiation, biological, chemical, and it's not fully understood. We're still a little uncertain about this. That's human experimentation. Now, wait a minute. Isn't this research? Research, human experimentation? No. Research is when you study something. Like, if I did a survey, what'd you guys eat for dinner? Who's the most nauseous guy? Oh, you, you, ate, you, ate, you didn't eat salad. That's a little research project, but I didn't experiment on you. I didn't give you weird food. A lot of times we experiment on things or people and we do the research to find out what happened. So the volcano erupts. Well, we got SO2. I could do research. But did we experiment? Did we expose people to the fumes? Not really. Not unless you force people to go in, then that's experiment. All right, next. Next. Now, you see, you expose some people to something not fully understood. But it's this guy, the individual. So when the community says, well, it's OK with me, but one guy says it's not OK with me, he gets to opt out. That's the beauty of human experimentation, the rules. It's the individual. You can't all decide to go push her into those cultural zones without her approval. Next, always remember that the individual opinion so Jim might say, hey, this is experimental. I might say, no, it's not. Well, then fine. You go breathe air, and he does it. Can you separate out? Next. All right. I want to talk about uncertainty. I told you some of these agents are a little bit uncertain or not fully understood to different individuals. Well, look, here's a scale. Very safe, very dangerous. Now, we know some things kind of dangerous, maybe a vaccine. We know some chemicals kind of safe, so this is where you think it is. It's called the point estimate. Next, 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 <laughs> next. Okay, around your point estimate, see this vaccine? Kind of dangerous, and here's your uncertainty. Is it really dangerous? Well, we're not real sure, but it's around here somewhere. Here's something kind of safe, but I really have no idea what it does. It's the uncertainty that makes it experimental, okay? So sometimes if I just expose us to poison, guarantee poison, that's not an experiment, that's a crime. <laughs> but when I put you to a low level and I don't know, that's uncertain. That's an experiment. And we have rules for experiments. Why do we have rules for ex human experimentation? Because we love human experimentation. That moves science forward, but it has to be done ethically, informed consent. Next, we'll get there. So this is the experimental one because it's so uncertain, even though, yeah, you kind of hope and think it's safe. Next. All right. When you do human experiments, you could do it on individuals. This is the most unethical human experimentation of U.S. history. That's the Skeggy syphilis trials. Or you can do it on an entire group. Well, you mean, don't, uh, isn't there a difference? The lawyers will tell you, well, hey, there's a difference. No, there's not. The U.S. Congress ruled on this in 1994. The international agencies ruled on this. They said when you do it to an entire group, that's nothing more than a bunch of individuals. You better get everybody's informed consent. Furthermore, when you do it to the entire community, I just, re I, I just uh, recertified my human experimentation rules uh, two months ago. Sometimes the community has to give a consent, but never, it never instead of the individuals. So first, 
Maybe the Hawaiians said, well, we don't like this. But if the Hawaiians said, well, it's okay with us, you still need the individuals. It's never a substitute for individuals. Next. Okay, and then next. Now, it starts off with the Nuremberg trials. This is a little gory, but you have to deal with it because I had to deal with it. <laughs> Nazi Germany and the Axis power. This is Dr. Ishii in Japan. Second World War. The doctors, this is the doctor's trials of Nuremberg. Turns out they did horrible things to people individually. The Jews, the gypsies, the mentally retarded, the elderly. Essentially, there are 12 kinds of experiments, and typically this is the freezing experiment. You freeze the guy, and you see how cold you could make him to almost death or death, because we didn't know when death was and when the, and you revive him. You said, let's bring them back. Why? Why did you do that? Because Nazi Germany was sending soldiers to Norway, and they got cold injury. And there's, when you revive somebody from cold, it's real spooky. There's a little zone. You get this arrhythmia, and they can die. So they studied 12 different ones, the radiation experiment, how close to death can you do it. On the other side of the Pacific, <laughs> the Japanese were doing called vivisection, cutting open people live without anesthetics. Well, because if we put anesthetics, that might change the nature of the process I'm watching, like birth. So let's just cut them open and watch them give birth. Holy crap. Now, if you focus on the goriness, the racism, the ugliness, you will miss the point. The point of the Nuremberg trials is the Nuremberg Code. It's coming up next. And they will tell you how to do medical experiments ethically. None of these people gave informed consent. Okay? So let's try not to focus on them. There were 21 Nazi doctors, seven were hung, seven life imprisonment, and seven kind of pardoned because I think they kind of spoke against it. But in the trial, this is the head, Dr. Brandt, before they hung him, he said, it was okay. We are not unethical. We did it for national interest, the war effort, and patriotism. And we also did it for science, because you, Dr. Pang, will someday revive the jumper off the Golden Gate Bridge when he gets cold. And you learned, when you cross the cold barrier, what a arrhythmia to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did use their stuff. Harvard said, use their stuff. Some countries said, don't use their stuff. It was unethical. But these arguments, national interest, war effort, it was ruled by the Nuremberg judges. That's no argument. National interest, war effort is not an argument for human experimentation. Okay? And neither is science. <laughs> but still, we like to do it. We have to do it. Also, they warned in the trial that the state courts, national, state, county of Germany or Japan, you think they're going to say, hey, I think that's unethical. No. So don't expect the countries that perpetuate these activities to say, yes, you're right, Yellow, you're right. They will give you a biased interpretation, always, in the courts, whatever level, in the legislatures, whatever level. That's the ruling and finding of Nuremberg. Next. Oh, next. Oh, okay. Don't try to read this. There's actually a Nuremberg code, 10 points. The main point is, Everybody in the study gives voluntary, well-informed, understanding, consent to be a subject. They can choose to be in or out. Also, if they already started, like now, you keep bombing Pakaloa, uh, you can leave at any time. Okay. And it's the individual guys who decide. And sometimes the community said, we decided for you. You cannot do this. But when the community says, one group says, you can do this, the individuals still get to say, well, not me. Next. I like these rules. I follow the rules. So when can you choose? I want to be in the experiment. Here's the doctor enrolling the woman in cancer chemotherapy. <coughs> Clinical trial, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, okay. Water additive, Flint, Michigan. Holy cow, Flint got polluted. They changed the water. They said, I think it's drinkable. A bunch of people said, I don't think it's drinkable. You're experimenting on us. You don't like it? Get bottled water. The question was, who's going to pay? Him or the government? 
but you can avoid it. GM food, uh, if it's labeled, I think you could avoid it. So you get to choose, kind of, well, mm. here's airborne stuff. This is our issue, airborne, bombing, DU. Look at that guy. He's tented his house for termites. The neighbor says, wow, I don't believe that stuff. Well, you don't like it? He tented it. Go to a motel three days, come back, and when it's over, you come back. If you don't like it, you can avoid it. Here's the military. We did little gas mask experiments, a uh, little exercise, and they train you for a week, and the culmination of the training is you go in the room, you spray with some kind of gas, you take off the mask, you say your name, rank, serial number, put the mask on, and happily on your way. And they tell you, first, it's going to be perfume. If you smell perfume, that bad, technically you're dead. You've got to repeat the course. Then it was banana smell. Okay. Then pepper spray. But during the training of the military in the Cold War days, they actually switched to mustard gas. Guys died and got mentally retarded. So that's the old switcheroo with no informed consent. That was bad. Poor information. Next. A couple of times you cannot stay out of the trial. This woman says, I'm not in the cancer chemotherapy trial. I know. Uh, we tested a live Shigella vaccine in Bangladesh, a live vaccine, spread to the community. 98% of the people said, we love it. Thank you, Dr. Pang, for helping us. 2% said, not me. You can't do it because it'll spread to those 2%. So I abide by the rules, but I see a lot of people not. Next, this is where you cannot control, you cannot opt out. When the stuff is drifting on the air, the dust of the depleted uranium, the pesticide, serratia, the chemical, when it's on the wind spreading hundreds of miles, I don't think that guy can opt out. Now maybe they can, maybe we'll all take a vote. Maybe if you sprayed it just once, those who didn't like it could go somewhere else. But you bomb every day, you spray your pesticides three times a week, forever. So everybody downwind, you can do it, you better get their informed consent. Good luck. Next. Okay, here's us, you know, spreading our pesticides. Uh, your bombing of Pahakaloa actually spreads hundreds of miles too. Depleted uranium. Next. Okay, so this is Flint, Michigan. You don't like it? Go get your own water. Hey, you could even get water from there if you want. Next. Next. Okay. That was the Nuremberg trials, setting the rules. Right after the Nuremberg trials, for 14 years, the U.S. and U university contractors did some horrible experiments that were secret for 30 years. What did they do? Well, they released radiation to individuals and communities. They released germs over the Bay Area, and they released chemicals to individuals and communities. Lots of communities, lots of individuals. And it was all, oh, they did mind control, LSD. Uh, they tried to make people stutter. They did on the people who were neglected, because you never noticed if you did it on the mentally retarded, and they did it to entire communities. The Bay Area, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Uh, this one, ah, I promised I'd focus on this. St. Louis, Minneapolis. And let's just talk about what they did for radiation. Next. Just the radiation, because I do pesticides. Okay. Never mind, it's here, he has a thing, but I'll just read the highlights. In the mid-50s, they released a fine powdery green dust over the people who were playing the kids in St. Louis streets. Whoa, the kid, it was sticky. They soon got brass thyroid skin, uterine cancers, and the other sister died of rare forms of cancer. The woman in hindsight says, hey, we were the guinea pigs. You don't have to show harm. I mean, yeah, the, the sister died, but at the time you released it, you didn't know. You didn't get their informed consent. Sometimes you do experiments and it turns out well. Oh, that was great. You didn't know when you released it. You didn't get informed consent. That's unethical. Okay, so here they are spraying this. And then they released over the rooftops of St. Louis, over the poor black projects, <coughs> same chemicals. Now, this was obvious. What's that chemical you're doing? So the military told them, this is a cloaking device. We will hide your community so when the Soviets attack, they can't see you. <laughs> that, no, no, that, was a, that was a lie. But even if it was true, it doesn't matter. What is your cloaking device? I didn't give informed consent. 
And in fact, they released radium. Radium is a radioactive particle really releasing alpha emitters, just like DU, and it releases it for 1,600 years. And if you get it in your body, it will take 15 years to clear because I will contrast this to depleted uranium. Next. And so when they did that over the uh, 11th floor of the woman, poor woman, uh, her father died quickly and all her kids got messed up. Then she says, you know all this stuff that happened, this is in hindsight, 30 years later, was run by a team of scientists who don't seem to communicate with anyone, who have no moral compass, and here's us, here's them, and they cloak it under confidentiality. Confidentiality, if it's national interest, that's not an argument according to the Nuremberg rules. Next. Okay. I keep quoting the Nuremberg rules, and my own lawyers say, yeah, yeah, that's international stuff. We're in the U.S. You want something U.S.? Here's the findings of the 1994 U.S. Congress. All right. Based on the Nuremberg rules, all right, all of that stuff you guys did in the Cold War with violations on the communities and the individuals. Communities are nothing more than a bunch of individuals. You're going to do it to a community? You get everyone's informed consent who's downwind. All right, same guidelines. Then, no harm has been shown. What does that mean? That means I'm going to keep doing it till I see harm. Good. By definition of an experiment, you don't know harm. So it's not that you, you're doing harm. If, if you know harm, it's a crime. If you don't know harm, it's an experiment. So no harm has been shown doesn't mean anything under the framework of experimentation. Then science and national security are never justifications against the individual's rights. Don't expect the individuals to get any kind of support from your system that operates from the U.S. system. Not in the courts, not in legislation, not in the regulatory agency. Don't expect anything. But the regulatory agencies spoke up during the hearing and said, we will, we, will, we will honor this. And so 16 regulatory agencies, and I think the Atomic Energy, said we will never do human experimentation again without informed consent. That's good, <laughs> except there's one little clause in there. When you get informed consent, it's freely given. There's no enticement or coercion, and I'm talking about financial. And when we fought pesticides on Maui, who was there telling us the economic input into the Maui community by the GM companies. Who is there telling us the military input and the RIMPAC economic value? That's called economic enticement and coercion. You are not to do that in case you forgot. But they seem to forget a lot nowadays. See, no coercion, job loss. Mm -hmm. ultimate, the ultimate intention doesn't really matter on the human exposure. In other words, I'm trying to kill a plant pest. Now, I know you guys got exposed, but I'm trying to kill a plant pest. I'm not trying to hurt you. That's human experimentation. In fact, some of this stuff they released was to increase communication in the ionosphere. I don't care what the intent is, cloaking device or whatever, humans were exposed. The end. Next. Pretty straightforward. I want to do this for you. This is my own. I want to put in perspective experimentation without informed consent. That's a no-no. Today, you hear all about the stuff, immigration rights and rules, gun control, the Me Too movement, voter registration, sanctuary city, blah, 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 all the rights. My own folks said, hey, Pang, you're so much into rights, next thing you'll be supporting gun rights. Wait, hey, let's put this in a little perspective. These are refugees on the Burmese-Thai border. I did my human experiments in them, curing malaria. I got their informed consent. The refugees do not have many rights. They can't drive, they can't vote. They're in a foreign country, they can't get a car, but they do not give up the right to be experimented on without informed consent. Some of them said no. And so those five said no. And they got malaria, and the next year they said yes. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I, no, I don't mean to be funny, but prisoners, Joliet Prison, malaria trials. You cannot do it on them. They lose many rights, prisoners, but you cannot experiment on them without informed consent. You really can't do it on them anymore because that's subtle coercion. You know, when he volunteered, then he got extra rations or something. Here is a Chinese general executed by a Japanese general, and they told the Chinese general, this is not racism. You're an honorable man. You're going to die. 
would you like to contribute to medical science? It's illegal. You, he loses many rights, but you cannot even approach him because he, he, it is a form of coercion because I'll feed your family extra if we kill you. Then finally, this is the Dr. Schilling, the Nazi doctor who's hung. And he says, I still say national interests vindicates me. I still say science. And I want to give my body, and they cut him off, put the bag over him, and hung him. We do not even do to him what he has done to others. This is a high order right. I've written to our attorney general. You for argue for immigration. You argue for Me Too movement, all this stuff. What about this? Experimentation without informed consent. Next. Okay, DU, quickly. Depleted uranium, here it is. It's emitting alpha particles. It's the leftover from the nuclear reactor. It emits alpha particles, which is really blocked. The other particles penetrate. Next. Now, if you external, you won't get it. Your skin will block it. But when you breathe it, whoa, that stuff is coming in. Alpha particles, the most dangerous particle when internalized. Next. But oh, this is good. Jim's copy got messed up. Yours is good, though. All right. So what did we do? We released all these spotter rounds and unknown stuff on Pohakaloa, millions of tons. Every time you blow it up or bomb it again, 50% goes up as dust. Some dust stays suspended forever. Some jumps 20 miles at a time, and some creeps along the ground till you bomb it again. Okay, and here it is for us to breathe. Next. All right, this is the Wikipedia of depleted uranium. Today, we still do not know its toxicity. Some people might say, that's too experimental for me. Wow. Wow. Did the, the Cold War experiments do depleted uranium? No, they did radium. Depleted uranium was discovered in 1970 when the Russians armed their tank. Quickly, in 1980, the US said, we will penetrate their depleted uranium shield with depleted uranium penetrators. And so 1991, we released it in the Gulf War in Bosnia, the bombings, and in Syria. Next, how much did we release? Well, 315 to 350 tons in the 1991 Gulf War. 10 to 15 tons in Yugoslavia. In the first three days of, of Iraq, first three days, 1,000 tons. Oh, that's a lot of depleted uranium. Next. So that's the exposure worldwide. And what are we doing at PTA? I have no idea. But whatever you did, it's now is depleted uranium oxides. The oxides persist in your body for months, sorry, for decades, maybe several decades. Radium, the one we did to the poor black communities, 15 years. This stuff can go in your body and not clear it for <clears throat> several decades. Do not be confused. The military will tell you depleted uranium clears the body in weeks. That's depleted uranium. Depleted uranium oxides stay in your body, radiating away. Next. All right. Here's the international response. I didn't know this. 1996, 97, they considered it international group weapon of mass destruction. Oh, finally, they urge all states, urge, urge, not ban, urge, to curb the use. Okay. And they said this is a human rights violation and you're violating humanitarian norms. I urge you to stop doing that. Okay, you urge me. Yeah. Then in 2002, they delivered a paper and said, those who continue, we will challenge you on Declaration of Human Rights, United Nations, Genocide Convention, whoa, Convention Against Torture, Geneva Convention, blah, blah, blah. You're violating all these conventions, so we urge you to stop. Next. <laughs> now, here is one. I would like to add violation of human experimentation. That's a biggie. We know how to do that. We hung guys for that. We didn't urge them to stop. Next. The European Parliament, oh, here we go. They are consistently requesting a moratorium, but France and the UK have said it is, the health risk has not been substantiated. You haven't proven harm. So what? It's experimental. If you prove harm, there's a crime. Actually, it's a crime. It's a weapon of mass destruction. But in the dilutions over PTA, that's an experimental. We follow experimentation protocol. Next. And the Nazis, you could have said the same argument during the Nazi trials. Well, you, 
you haven't actually proven how dangerous this is. So I don't care how you urge and request, we're just going to ignore them. No teeth so far. Next. Okay, now we're getting close. 2012, 155 states support the resolution. Because of the uncertainty, A, I didn't put the word in, uncertainty, is that part of experimentation? Uncertainty, they want to go the precautionary principle, you don't have to prove harm, you assume it's dangerous because it's uncertain. All right, 2014, here they are, the General Assembly, they want you to, you know, stop that, but they also want the affected states, I think that's us, Prohaka Loa, to help uh, the other states using it identify and manage the states that you trashed. In other words, all you guys who bombed Iraq, Yugoslavia, Syria, the guys who bombed, there's a resolution to go help them identify, manage, and clean up. Maybe they'll come here. Next. Uh, this is the final slide. I want to move this issue to human experimentation framework. It has teeth, more than just urging and requesting. It is based on the individual. Hey, two guys say no. It's on the wind. The answer is no. It's a high priority human right. Yep. It supersedes national interests, and there's questionable national regulatory decisions. No harm has been shown. Becomes a very strange argument when you're talking about experimentation. That's why you do an experiment, because you really don't know the harm. It's an individual decision, confidential, and you cannot be ridiculed for it. Now, mom's against Monsanto. Well, you guys aren't scientists. Hey, she gets to decide. You don't get to say you're dumb. Okay? You don't get to say you're not a scientist. You don't even get to know how she decided. It's confidential, her decision. Okay, all of this has precedent. Nuremberg trial, Cold War hearings, U.S. There's written rules. It applies to community as well as individuals. Yup. Some settings, ooh, live virus and on the air. The, you can't sort out who's who. Two people say no, it's no. Now Maui voted a majority. But if two guys said no, well, I mean, the answer is still no. I'm not against any product. Like, I want to make this clear. Medical research is good, but you have to do it ethically. For example, organ transplant. That's brilliant. I took his liver and he gave it to me. But if done in the wrong way, if it's trafficking, <laughs> that's terrible. The transplant was trafficking. You paid him without his information. He gave me it. But if it's done right, and he gives informed consent, and we search the internet for all the compatible people, that's brilliant. It's not the product. It's how you wield it on people without their informed consent. I think that's the last one. Thank you. Now, Jim and you have this slide. Thank you. Just one point of clarification. Uh, Lauren talked about DU uh, versus DU oxide. Yes. Uh, DU was used at Puakaloa as a spotting round. It was a metal. But that metal has been hit by 70 years of high explosives, and it's burned. And therefore, the metal is transformed into DU oxide. oxide. Correct. And that's the hazard when DU oxide dust particles. It's not the metal in an external exposure. It's the internalized DU oxide. So thanks. Five minutes. Take a break. Take a break for five a break. minutes, and then we'll... Turn it over to Pop.